What's up everybody, this is Cakes and welcome back to another tutorial in which we create a Windows window. We start by adding in a section and I do this in every file which is called Windows Globals. And then we create a function called Platform Create Window. This takes in a width and a height and a name. Then we create another section and call it Platform Functions. And then below that we add in the header of the function Platform Create Window. This takes in an int width and a height and a character pointer to our title. And then we create yet another section that we call the Windows Platform. The reason why we do that is because we are going to have multiple platforms. And the first one that we are going to implement is Windows. And so as you can see here, this main.cpp file is acting as a header file for all the platforms that we are going to add in later. And all of the functions that we define in the main file need to be implemented by the specific platform layer. Right now, we're going to put it all into the main file, but later on, we're going to split it into Windows, Linux, and Mac. So yeah, we take the Windows platform and then we start defining if we are on Win32, which is the handle of Windows. Then we want to include Windows. And for that, we define the Windows32 lean and mean and the no min max. Basically, what that means is we're not trying to include the entire Windows layer if we are including the windows header file which we do here and we also do not want to have the min and max functions of windows because those would collide with our own min and max functions that we are going to implement later much later on below that we add in another section called windows globals right now it's going to be empty but later on we are going to be using it and then below that we have the windows platform implementations and of course we're going to start by implementing the platform create window function in order to create a window we need to get a connection to the windows platform and we do that by calling a function called get module handle the a a stands for ANSI. I know this is a little bit confusing because on Windows there exists multiple functions for the same thing. For example, if you just call get module handle, that will call down to get module handle A most of the time. And uh, I'm just calling it directly and the A stands for ANSI, which is the encoding. So yeah, we get ourselves the instance which we need when we register our window class. And uh, that is what we're going to create next. The window class takes in, of course, the instance and then what type of icon our application will have. And uh, we're just going to use the default one from Windows. After that, we need to fill in what type of cursor we want to have. And for now, we are just going to use the default arrow cursor. The next one is what we call a class name. Do not confuse this with the title. Even though I'm putting the title there, this is a handle that I uniquely identifies this window. I'm just supplying the title here because I'm lazy, but you could use anything you want. Just wanted to point that out. It's not the title. And after this, well, this is very interesting. This is called the long function pointer to a Windows proc address or a window proc address. This is the callback for input. So whenever you move the mouse, you press any keys or you resize the window, all of these are events that are going to be sent to this function. Right now we're using the default one because it's just opening the window. But later on, we will define our own callback. And then after that, we call register class A, which if it succeeds, we now have registered our class, which means that we can start to create the window. Here's a quick look at the documentation that you could find online. I'll put the link in the description. The first parameter is the extended window style. I'm not going to use it, but I quickly want to show you what it does. You can click on the documentation on what it does here. And it's basically, if you want to accept drag and drop files, if you want the window to be on top all the time, stuff like this can be defined in the extended window style. And if you feel the need to use it, then this is where you can do it. For me, I'm just going to leave it at zero. And then the second parameter is not the actual title, even though I'm supplying it. This is the reference to the window class the unique identifier and then after that we finally have the title this is actually the title i know this is confusing so if you want change it to another string i don't want to do that because i'm lazy but yeah the next one is quite important this is where we supply a style to the window which basically tells it what we want to show for example here we can tell it if we want to have a caption a minimize box a maximize box we have to tell windows all of these things the ws overlapped window option combines the most common ones into one and this is what we are using here the next two parameters tell windows where to position the window and then after that we have the width and height and then the next parameter is the parent and the menu for those we specify null which is the windows null pointer I don't know why they just don't use null pointer, but okay. Then we need the instance again. And after that, we have lparam, which we leave on null as well. Below the function, we check if the window is null. And if so, then we have to return false because we didn't manage to create one. Otherwise, we are going to show the window by invoking show window. And if everything works fine, we return true and we should be seeing a window. Quickly build the program by invoking control shift B. If you did everything correctly, you should get a warning here that basically says ISO C++11 does not allow convert 
conversion from string literal to character pointer. Basically, this is complaining about our string literal that we put into the function call and it doesn't want that. I think this error is annoying and so I'm just going to remove it. In order to do that, please go into the build.sh file. Once in the file, type in lips equal sign and a minus l user 32 and warnings equals minus dash no dash writable dash strings and then add the dollar labs and dollar warnings into the compile command if we run the program now we should see a window uh, but you notice that it has the circle of death we can't interact with it in any way and the reason for that is because not only do we need to create a window we also need to update the input that gets sent to it so any resize or input events are not getting flushed through the window yet and they are just being blocked so that means we need to create another function in which we update the window i call it platform update window we go down below into the window section and implement the function what we have to do here is first of all we create a message object on the stack so basically what is happening there's a queue of messages and we need to make sure that we empty that queue and so we peek one message we fill in the data and then we need to dispatch it which will then be handled by the callback and if you remember we defined the default callback for now in order to do that we need a window handle though and so since we created that on the stack in the other function we have to make it global now which is where the global section of the windows library comes in so please go back to the platform create window function remove the hwind identifier and then add a static hwind window global variable to the windows global section then go back down below to the platform update window function and we should be able to reference the window now the next thing we need is a filter we don't want to filter anything so leave that at zero then the maximum filter is zero two then we want to pm remove the message whenever we pick it we also want to remove it from the queue then we need to translate the message and after that we dispatch the message which basically sends it to the callback of the window that we defined up above after we are done with that we need to go back into the main function and actually invoke the update window function every time we go through the while loop so this is the first step that we do every time in our application we update the window and we check for input if we open the window now we see the first thing is we have a mouse cursor that is good second is we don't have a circle of death anymore also we can resize the window if we want to now the resizing doesn't work perfectly there are some black and white quads but we're going to handle that later when we actually do opengl stuff we are also able to use the menus of the window aka making it big minimizing it and closing it but that is boring in and of itself we want to actually gather input and so now that we have used the default windows proc address we want to create our own and i always call it windows window callback so go back to the platform create window function and then replace the default callback with the windows window callback obviously we haven't implemented that yet and so we need to create a new function right above the platform create function and that needs to have a special signature which is the l result callback in all caps then our name of the function windows window callback it takes in a window a message a w param and an l param and then inside the function on the we create an L result. This is the return value of the function. And then after that, we switch on the message that we receive. Right now, we're just interested in the close message. So we specify case WM close. And if that happens, we just set our global variable running to false. And then for every other message, we just invoke the default proc address. That takes in the window the message the w param and the l param down below we return the result and then we should be able to open the window and close it which will now close our application and this is everything you need to know in order to open up a windows window in my opinion this is not that much to do and it's actually quite simple and uh, yeah now you know how sdl2 or glfw open up windows obviously there's more stuff that you can do like the drag and drop files so yeah i hope you enjoyed the video if you want to challenge yourself how about you think about what you need to do if you want to gather input from the operating system like key presses for example could be a nice idea until then thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe for more and i'll see you in the next one peace